Well, good morning. Welcome to Service of the Word. My name is Kurt Lamy. I am the pastor of Paul Lutheran Church on Dog Leg Road in Dayton, Ohio. I'm joined this morning by my wife, Rachel, who is the organist at the Kettering Seventh-day Adventist Church in Kettering, Ohio. And of course, we're joined by daughter, Rose. Today's service will follow the revised common lectionary readings for the fourth Sunday after Epiphany, lectionary four of year B. Today's music is covered by one license, license number A-731558. And now, let us send our souls for worship by listening to the prelude. Today's prelude is Steal Away, Arrangement by Christina Shady. We begin in the way in which we live and in which we're baptized. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, 
come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today's first reading comes from Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. So then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words of the prophet shall speak in my name. I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, who presumes to speak in my name a word that I did not command the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 111, verses 1 through 10. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the work, power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The 
works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Now, concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Well, indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and from whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and being weak is defiled. Well, food is close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter verses 21 to 28. Glory to you, O Lord. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. Well, they were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Well, just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 
Well, near the end of last year, I read a perfect quote for 2020. It wasn't said by the president or by Dr. Fauci or by Governor DeWine. It wasn't said by any political group or grass movements group. It wasn't said by any celebrities. Well, actually, now that I think about it, they might have said it, but I don't know. What I do know is that most of us probably said it. The line that perfectly captured 2020 was, you're on mute. <laughs> when this pandemic started back in March, very few of us knew what Zoom was. Now it's become a household term. And most people know that when someone has that little red line through their microphone icon, we have to say, you're on mute. But it's kind of funny, though, that for a year when you're on mute was a common phrase, there was also a whole lot of talking. There was talk by the president and Dr. Fauci and Governor DeWine. There was talk by political groups and grass movements groups. There was talk from celebrities. And even though mass gatherings have been reduced, it seems like the amount of talk has increased. Everyone has something to say. Whether it's a talking head on the news, or a troll online, or simply somebody you hang out with every day. And most of the time, the talk is very negative. Right? I mean, honestly, how many of you have avoided watching the news because it's so negative? You don't want to deal with all that. Or how many times have you posted something online only to have somebody reply, well, that's your opinion? Or how often has somebody started rambling on about something to you and you just want them to shut up? Sometimes we can't avoid all of the talk and negativity. Whether it's outside of us or inside of us. Right? I mean, sometimes the negative talk comes from in our own heads. For example, in August, the CDC released a report called Mental Health, Substance Abuse, and Suicidal Ideation During the COVID-19 Pandemic. United States, June 24 to 30, 2020. And the report showed, quote, U.S. adults reported considerably elevated adverse mental health conditions associated with COVID-19. So not only does the coronavirus affect us physically, it affects us mentally and emotionally, too. Right? We're tired. We're frustrated, we're angry, we're anxious, and a whole host of other things. Right? You know what I'm talking about. You felt these things during the pandemic. So we might be able to turn off the TV and stop listening to that negativity, but it's harder to mute the, the voices in your own head. Right? These are the voices that keep telling you there's no hope that you are not an essential person, that things will never get better, and so on. And so that means there's an irony here. On the one hand, 2020 was summed up as you're on mute, but we also have a whole bunch of negative voices yelling at us from our screens or from our in our own heads. And those voices are very much like the voice that's screaming in our gospel reading today. So let's look at that one again. Here we are, still at the beginning of Mark. Jesus has been baptized, he's called the fishermen to follow him, and now we see him doing his first public act. Now Mark doesn't have Jesus' first act as the Sermon on the Mount like in Matthew, or a sermon in his hometown, like in Luke, or even turning water into wine at the wedding at Cana, like in John. 
know in Mark, Jesus' first act is an exorcism. Right from the beginning, this gospel writer wants us to know that Jesus' ministry will be about facing off with demons. And so it makes sense that when he arrives in the synagogue in Capernaum, there's a demon-possessed guy there. But let's pause there for a moment. Why in the world would a demon-possessed guy be in the synagogue in the first place? Wouldn't the leaders there notice him and try to kick him out? Well, one theory is that perhaps this guy was acting as the mouthpiece for the leaders of the synagogue. Think about it. Jesus was there, teaching on the Sabbath, which was fine. But then, they were astounded at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So perhaps the scribes and other leaders are the ones who scream through the power of this unclean spirit, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. They wanted their own voices to be heard, not Jesus' voice. Right, for example, notice the verb to verse. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Right, the unclean spirit cried out. He shrieked, he wailed, he made a bunch of noise. Also, notice the that the spirit knows who Jesus is and what he's capable of. Right? Throughout the Gospel of Mark, very few characters recognize who Jesus really is. But the demons do. They know right off the bat that he is the Holy One of God. Because yes, he has come to destroy them. But Jesus rebuked them saying, be silent and come out of him. Jesus put the unclean spirit on mute and then removed him from the meeting that was the man's life. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. The unclean spirit does not want to be silent. So it shouts even louder. But Jesus still prevails. Right? And the people were amazed at Jesus. But not because of his exorcism powers. They were amazed by his teaching. Listen to the text again. They were all amazed and kept on asking one another, What is this? a new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. Right? So that means Jesus did not cast out this unclean spirit by laying his hands on the man. Instead, he made the spirit leave by his teaching. That's worth noticing. But... How does it play out for us today? Well, we still have plenty of voices that call for our attention. We have plenty of people from all kinds of perspectives who think they're being destroyed. We have plenty of arguing and infighting and everybody thinking they know what's best. Again, just watch the news. Read stuff online. Listen to the people around you. So where is Jesus now? Well, Jesus is still here to tell those voices to be silent. Let me put it this way. In the text, it says that the unclean spirit cried out. 
But when Jesus addresses the unclean spirit, he simply said his words. Right? Jesus did not scream or yell. Jesus did not make a fuss. Jesus did not demand to be heard. Instead, he spoke a powerful word. A word that might get lost in all the noise, but a powerful word nonetheless. Jesus' word depends not on being loud, but on being true. And there's a big difference. This is a word of love and mercy and grace. This is a word of new life and redemption and forgiveness. This is a word of promise and healing and hope. And Jesus still speaks that word to us today. His voice may not be crying out. It may not be shouting. It may not be on the news. But his voice is the one we listen to as disciples. Because it can still silence the unclean spirits and bring new life to our world. So listen to Jesus saying these words to you now. <clears throat> I am right here with you. I know things are hard on you. I know you've been through a lot. I know it's hard to keep going sometimes. <clears throat> but I am right here with you. I am stronger than anything you face. And even if you can't handle it, Remember that I can. Even when you feel hopeless, remember that the grave is still empty. Even when you feel like the world is changing too fast around you, remember that I am your rock and I still hold on to you. Do not listen to all those voices that put you down. Instead, let me be the voice you listen to. Let me lift you up. I am here to bring you to new life. <clears throat> well, with that kind of voice, it's no wonder why the unclean spirit left the man. Because even that spirit knows that Jesus is really in charge. So go ahead and say to the world, you're on mute. Because we listen to the voice of Jesus instead. In the name of the one who has a powerful and life-giving voice, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn is in your ELW as hymn 593. Drawn to the Light, 593.
together, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need, responding, have mercy, O God. For all who share the gospel and proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders, for the church and its ministries, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all God's works in creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forests and farms, and for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For government and leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals and legal aid attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizers, for all responsible for the well-being of civil society, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, for those who are sick and hospitalized, those living with HIV, AIDS, those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry and homeless, and all who are in any need, especially those we name now, either aloud or silently in our hearts. for caregivers, hospice workers, and home health aides. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the concerns of this congregation, for those who travel and those who remain at home, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries during this pandemic, for the people of God gathered together online and for other needs in our community, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who write cards and make phone calls, those who video chat with others, those whose little acts of love bring companionship and love to others during this pandemic, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the covenant God made with us in the waters of baptism, in thanksgiving for the baptized who have died in the Lord, let us pray. 
Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And now, please use the comment section to leave a word of peace to the others participating in this service with you today. Peace be with you, Ross. Also, since we are not able to collect an offering during an online service, please leave yourself a reminder to mail your offering to the church office. It is because of your ongoing generosity that we can continue doing ministry together. And now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is ELW Hymn 314, Arise, Your Light Has Come, 314. <laughs> for this service of the word. We pray that all of you stay healthy. And please remember to check on others, especially those who live alone. Now, log, log out, out in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.